Good evening, West Covina. Welcome to our Thursday night Bible study. Let's have a word of prayer before we get started. Pastor JP. Heavenly Father, we invite your Holy Spirit to be with us. We are excited to, um, to dig into your uh, word, to understand it better. And I pray that you would just give us wisdom to, to see clearly what you're trying to teach us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. First of all, I just realized I've been a bit of a punk, both in this one and in the two I reported by myself, in that I just start talking to into the camera and never introduce myself, and he's very good about introducing. Uh, so I'm Pastor Jillian, this is Pastor JP, and we are, we are two of the three pastors at West Covina Hills Seventh-day Adventist Church. Now, last week, we were going through some very thorny passages mm -hmm. where different groups of people are putting pressure on Jesus. Uh, which is all part of a bigger section where Jesus curses the fig tree, then he clears out the temple, and then, bam, no fruit on the fig tree. And then Jesus tells a story that pretty much accuses, accuses everyone of rejecting him. But also, and this is important for today's passage, he indirectly, so not so much that they could actually arrest him for it, but directly enough for them to pick up on it, says that he is the son of God mm. by saying, and then they took the son of the owner of the vineyard and killed him. Yeah. So he's both accusing them and saying, by the way, I'm the son of God in one parable. <laughs> and that's key to what happens in this passage. Last week, the Pharisees and the Herodians talked to him about things. The Sadducees questioned him. And now we are in Mark chapter 12, verse 28, it's one of the teachers of the law. One of the teachers of the law. The distinction between a teacher of the law and a Pharisee is that it's simply a matter of rank. A teacher of the law would probably be a Pharisee, but not all Pharisees are teachers of the law. So one of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating, noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer. He asked him of all the commandments, which is the most important? Mm. Which is the most important? There's two ways of reading this passage, and I would love to hear your opinion at the end of this as to mm -hmm. which reading is, um, which reading you agree with. Is this a trap? No, 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 no. <laughs> because the big, the big wild card that's not sure. specified in here and affects how you read it mm -hmm. is whether this teacher of the law was in good faith and simply asking yeah, a pure question. You. Um, from a place of curiosity, Jesus. or if he too is trying to entrap Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's pure curiosity, which is, you know, the way most people read it, then, you know, he just wants to know. He just wants Jesus to summarize it up so that he can get Jesus' opinion about it. It's just an intellectual exchange. Lovely. But if the teacher of the law is trying to trap Jesus, here's the specific trap he's trying to set. Mm -hmm. He's noticed that Jesus is a bit of an iconoclast. He's trying to get Jesus to, I, to state a way of looking at the law that will trap him up and get him arrested. You see, this quest for a central principle underneath the law is something mm -hmm. that was in common to all of these different groups. They were all looking for basically a grand unified theory of the scriptures. Um, and if Jesus says something that's out of the line, it's a very easy way to get him. There's these, in, in the books of Moses, there's the 613 laws, and the the rabbis had sort of grouped them into the lighter and the heavier. Mm -hmm. The lighter is, you know, minor, sure. minor infractions, you know, um, maybe ceremonial manners that you might deal with by simply being unclean for a bit and then washing. Mm -hmm. The heavy things are like murder and adultery and breaking the Sabbath and you know this is mm -hmm. this is the heavy stuff and so the question was what makes something lighter or heavier what is the principle under which the whole law rests so this is what's behind this is what's behind if it's an antagonistic question of all the commandments which is the most important by the way hotly debated at the time yeah uh, because of it you know, at PS, uh, we, I think we do the same thing. Oh, yeah. As some of the oh, Adventists. Yeah. We don't realize it. We don't really ask the question. But we do debate, like, what's the most important thing that we can do 
Uh, what's the most important? I, I the big debate in Adventism is tends to be whether the heartbeat of Adventism is one of basically three things: the sanctuary, uh, Jesus, or the health message. As far as I can see it, there's another camp out there that might make it about the Sabbath. I, th I think so. Which tends to be more more like the health message. Yeah. Um, I will not weigh in on that one right this instant. <laughs> that's not the point of even this though, lesson. Even though I have a very strong opinion about it because that's a rabbit trail that, that I'm actually going to be giving a seminar on in mm. October at the One House okay. celebration. So, Very cool. I did not mean to just advertise that, but it's October 22 at the Alhambra SDA Church, and be it's there. going to be awesome. <laughs> anyway, so here's Jesus' answer. The most important one is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. Love the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. Mm. There is no commandment greater than these. All right. Before I get into the content of Jesus's words, let me say something about just how brilliant this answer is if the, if the man is antagonistic. Jesus' opening line, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, mm -hmm. was the basic Jewish statement of faith. Yes. Even today, a faithful Jew will recite it every morning and every evening. It is the most important heartbeat mm -hmm. of the entire of the entire Jewish faith. Mm -hmm. It, it, it identifies you as a Jew. Yeah. Uh, Jesus is saying, I am fully a Jew. Yeah. Yeah. He is saying, I wholeheartedly agree with the bottom line of our faith. Mm -hmm. I wholeheartedly agree. And then... And by the way, he is quoting the scripture. He's this quoting Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. He's quoting Deuteronomy mm -hmm. 6 verse 5, which I don't always sit around with text references in my head, but... <laughs> This one's going to be in my baby's dedication. I didn't so. know the exact verse, so <laughs> it was also a verse I used at my at my ordination because this is so important to me. Because in the text in Deuteronomy, what follows, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, is what I consider the scriptural philosophy behind youth ministry is these commandments of mine, teach them to your children, write them on your doors, talk about them as you go in and as you go out. It's such a beautiful, beautiful passage about how, what matters in faith and how important it is to pass it on to the next generation. Amen. That that's what keeps it going, this beautiful unbroken chain of parents to children mm -hmm. and making it a way of life. It's gorgeous. And the second part, love your neighbor as yourself, is in another passage later in Deuteronomy that goes on to talk about bind them on your foreheads and tie them, you know, tie them on your wrists, which is the which is where some people got the weird idea for making phylacteries. But the whole idea was to integrate it into your mind and into your actions. So these are these are both passages that are very dear to every single person of the Jewish faith that encompasses the entire way of life. And Jesus right here is establishing that for Christians, it's still the foundation. This is the foundation mm -hmm. of both Judaism and Christianity is love for God and love for one another. Do you think there's a um, idea out there that Jesus, because you know, the new commandments or that mm -hmm. it's not really a new idea. No. It's founded on Old Testament scripture. Yes. It's the basis of the Jewish religion. Mm -hmm. um, and now Jesus is bringing it into the New Testament, but framing it in such a simple mm -hmm. way that we can uh, put the, put it together and say, you know, this is the most important thing that I love God and I love others. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have occasionally had the privilege of working, studying with people who have converted to Adventism from Judaism um, or who are in the process of converting. And what I find so beautiful about that is, is that even though the culture is different, the bottom line of the two faiths are more or less the same. And 
while there are certain layers of modern Jewish thinking that have to be abandoned to follow Christ, the underlying beauty of the Jewish faith is still a crucial component in Christianity. And if someone converting from Judaism to Adventism wants to keep celebrating Passover and all the other festivals that pointed forward to Jesus but now make Jesus the centerpiece, why not? Mm -hmm. If, as, as Roman says, um, if the Gentiles can be grafted onto the tree, how much more those who were, who were yes. pruned before? Absolutely. Well, because they're natural branches. The natural branches. Mm -hmm. How much more can the natural branches be reattached? And I believe that with all my heart. I, I, have, a, I, have, a, I have a soft spot for the Jewish people. Oh. I really do. I really do. So this is, this is an absolutely fantastic answer if, if the man is antagonistic. And it's such a conventional answer even. This is like the one time we see Jesus giving a super conventional answer that it's even in the rabbinic writings as a summary of the Law and the Prophets. Mm -hmm. There's a story that someone asked thus and such rabbi, I forget which one, that's all like, summarize, summarize the entire Law and Prophets while standing on one foot. And he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and your soul and your strength and love your neighbor as yourself. Like, this is what a conventional answer it is that even other Jewish thinkers at the time were saying it. Mm -hmm. Um, for this most crucial of things, Jesus is not trying to be an individual. He's not trying to stick out. He's like, I agree with you on the thing that matters most. You can't trap me on this because the truest things are still true. So in terms of content of this answer, let's get real for a moment. Sometimes we're tempted to make it all about our distinctives, to make it all about the places where we disagree, mm -hmm. to make it all about um, behaviors yeah. and whether they are the ultimate, you know, most perfect or pure behaviors, or we get mm -hmm. really concerned. This is an easy tangent for me to get off of, but if I hear one more Christian complaining about what the world does, I'm going to scream. <laughs> Jesus doesn't comment on what the world does. The world is the world. Of course it's going to do stupid things. And did you really surprise us? Did you really expect the world to behave like good Christians? <laughs> That's not the point of our faith. The heartbeat of it is love the Lord your God. Amen. With all your heart, with all your soul, and all your strength. Eyes on your own paper. Don't look at what the world does. That is such a great point. And love your neighbor as yourself. Don't spend your time judging what the world's doing. Love them. Mm. Love them. We go to them not with an aim of sanitizing them, but because we love them and know that they need the hope mm -hmm. that is in Jesus. Mm -hmm. The joy and the pleasure that comes from following him. Um, and this, this assumes, by the way, that you actually love yourself to some degree. If it says love your neighbor as yourself, it assumes that you already have a certain amount of self-preservation for yourself. Um, a part of loving others is looking at them as though they matter as much as you do. Looking at them as though they matter, ma matter as much as you do. It means casting aside the tendency to other eyes mm -hmm. the people that populate your, your world. And that is so hard for some people to do. In this, in this perspective, there is no room for us versus them. Yeah. Whether that takes the form of racism, theological mm -hmm. purity, um, political party, mm -hmm. even differences of faith. They are, all, they are all people that we are called to love. And perhaps those who are most lost, we are most called to love. I feel like there's a spirit of divisiveness today. Yeah. I don't know if it's COVID. I don't mm. know. It feels like it's politics. More it's everything. Politics has become really big, but I feel like it's more than that. I Even feel the like... Lord of the Rings fans are acting like Star Wars fans right now and griping about the <laughs> and griping about the casting the of Hobbits. Series. They're griping uh... about the casting of Hobbits. I'm like, guys, it's a fictitious <laughs> land. Just enjoy the story. Um, I just feel like um, I. 
personally, I yeah. think it's social media. Yeah. I think social media has created this environment where you mm -hmm. just say whatever you want. Yeah. You just spew. You just say whatever comes to your head. There's no filter. There's no... And I feel like it's created mm -hmm. a culture of just stabbing, words mm -hmm. hurting, yeah. no thoughtfulness for the feelings or emotions of others. Yeah. And under the guise of free speech, which I... I I would never want to disappear. I, right. Freedom of speech is so powerful, but I just feel like people have taken it to the point where they're, they don't care about others. Mm -hmm. And um, politics is in there right now. I feel like it's just so divisive, yeah. so hurtful. Uh, you, can't, you can't talk about it with anybody because mm -hmm. of the antagonistic um, attitude that's there, the mm -hmm. hatefulness of, yeah. on the two sides of, of the camp. Um, but also it's religion. Mm -hmm. uh, today it's just so people do not want to discuss it in a peaceful thoughtful way mm -hmm. um, it's just um, yeah. if we can't even discuss pop culture calmly how can we discuss something as important as religion or politics calmly I mean come on it, it, we we are in trouble and I mm -hmm. wonder if it's the signs of the times um, right. the Bible does say the love of many will grow cold I I feel like that is expressing the idea that as we get closer to the end, that people will not not only love God, but they're not going to love their neighbor either. Yeah. Um, that that hate um, is going to be the the modus operandi for the world. That people mm -hmm. are just going to treat each other bad. And yeah. I feel like we're there. People yeah. are treating each other bad. The love of many will grow cold. I mean, it's tragic. I, for for reasons, I would, my husband and I have been in and out of the ER a couple of times this year. And on one of those visits, a security guard told my husband about how there was a random elderly patient who was beaten up by a total stranger in the parking lot of the ER. There was no relationship between them two and no antagonism. And there was this violence towards one's neighbor. Our car was vandalized while I was in labor at the hospital in broad daylight. The love of many is growing cold. At least mm -hmm. I understand the car theft because there's money involved, but the... <sighs> All of this is antithetical to the great law of love. So getting back to the, the immediate yeah, I was gonna I was going to bring us back. Yeah, bringing us back, yeah. That um, both points, loving God and loving your neighbor, I think... Mm -hmm. Emphasizes the idea that really the key to what it means to be a Christian, mm -hmm. key to what it means to be a follower of Jesus, is yeah. love. Um, I, I don't think we emphasize that enough. I, we try to, but yeah. I just don't think we miss the mark because it's the key component to everything, whether it's God's it love for us or whether it's our love for God or yeah. our love for others. Um, I feel like it's the central theme of the it scripture. Is. A lot of things take our attention and try to, but Jesus is pulling it back in a simple answer, helping us to remember that love is the key. Yeah. So let's see the man's response. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding and with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. So again, there's two ways of reading this. If he's friendly, he's agreeing with Jesus, just plain and simply agreeing with him. If he's antagonistic, he's trying to bait Jesus into saying, yeah, those sacrifices aren't important at all. And then to get everyone mad at him and rush him towards the crucifixion. But when Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the mm. kingdom of God. This is a fascinating answer in both cases. If he's friendly, this is Jesus giving an invitation. Mm -hmm. You're not far. You're not far. There's something more to do. If it's unfriendly, Jesus is reminding him that there's still more to go. And what is that more to go? There needs to be a work of repentance. There needs to be a work of repentance mm -hmm. and of coming to God, of accepting Jesus' message into one's life. Hmm. I mean, how could the um, 
the, the, the person is asking him this question, um, how could he describe, how could he disagree with Jesus? Right. He's give, Jesus is giving the pat answer. Yeah. <laughs> so how He's giving you, the textbook answer. How do you say, no, that's not it? He's giving the basic answer. <laughs> so there's no way for him to disagree, really, yeah. he's if he's trying to trap Jesus, which the last, you know, I don't want to jump ahead of you, but mm -hmm. th the last phrase seems to imply that these traps that have been set dealing with what we talked about last time with mm -hmm. taxes and then resurrection, mm -hmm. and now this, that there's a link to these three stories, which... If you're yeah. asking me, do I think it was a trap? I do think it was a trap. I don't right. think this is an honest seeker. Yeah. Because the Bible says at the end, and Mark is letting us know or giving us a hint that, sorry, I'm, I'm going to read well, it. Well, and from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. Mm -hmm. So that implies that it was antagonistic. I, I think so. Yeah. And I think it's linked to the other two stories. And like any yeah. good writer, they're clumping together the same things that, you know, are similar. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not really seeing the trap per se, maybe because Jesus was so masterful right. at leading the one who was trying to trap him. Right. Um, uh, so, and so, maybe it's both an invitation and mm -hmm. a light rebuke. So if you agree with, so if you agree with this, why not follow me? The last thing I would want to hear from God is you're not far from the kingdom of heaven. You might say, but that sounds like a good thing. It's a, it's a compliment in one way, but on the other, you're still not there. I'm not there. I'm not part of the kingdom of God. I'm not connected with the kingdom of God. I'm close, but I'm not there. What does that mean? I, I don't want to be close to mm -hmm. being saved. <laughs> I, and I don't, perhaps I, this summarizes Jesus' whole frustrating relationship with these different pressure groups and with the Pharisees in particular. Um, he spent way more time telling off the Pharisees than anybody else. Mm -hmm. Not the not the straight up sinners. He spent like no time condemning the world itself. He expected the world to be evil. You know, just the world is the world. It's its own thing. He had the most frustration for the people who actually believed closest to him and were not quite there. Mm -hmm. That's where he had the most words. And perhaps more of those words have been recorded for us than any others because that's where we're most likely to fall, to be yeah. not far so close but not far i don't want you know uh, th this is figurative of course mm -hmm. i don't really believe this is the way it is but I, I don't want to be at the end of my life and be close to making it right? <laughs> I, I don't want that i don't want that to be the truth of my life mm -hmm. i don't want to be close y you want to be there yeah. um so um jesus is warning the man I think, yeah. um, in, a, in a positive way, though. Mm -hmm. He's warning him that close is not there. It's, yeah. it's not quite. Um, but Jesus was a master in this moment like he was before, oh, certainly. Yeah. yeah. You know, in, in answering in such a way that the man was trapped. <laughs> mm -hmm. And had to say, you're right, what you said yeah. is exactly the truth. And like, Jesus is like, yep, <laughs> sure yeah, is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <sighs> so what can we take away from this? At the end of the day, it's both simple but hard to practice. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. Simple, and yet we spend our whole lives learning new and beautiful ways to do it. Would you like to pray for us? I would love to. Heavenly Father, um, wow, I... I want the simple truth of loving you and loving others. I want that to be the center of my life. And I know mm -hmm. that those who are listening to this, they're, they're getting that this is the main point. Mm -hmm. to, to, and they're in their heart, they're also desiring to have a love relationship with you and then to be the kind of Christian that would love the people around them. And so, Father, to this end, the simplicity um, we ask it to be the central theme of our lives, that you would help us to block out all of the distractions and that we would live in such a way that love would flow um, through us into others. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.